Let's hear. I, I wrote longer. Please. Good morning, everyone. This is the time set in FC 2023-052-114. Appearances, please, beginning first with Petitioner's Council. Good morning, Your Honor. David Jingris on behalf of Laura Owens. Ms. Owens is present with me uh, in court today along with her, her mother and our medical expert, Dr. Michael Mitchell. Good morning to you all. And from the respondent, please. Good morning, Judge. Greg Woodnick appears from Clayton Asher, and also with me is my co-counsel, Angelina and Isabel Ranny. Good morning to all of you. Is that by chance our expert, maybe? Oh, no, I wasn't talking to the media. You're fine. I was talking to Layla. All right. So, councils, I know we discussed in chambers whether the rule is going to be invoked or not. What did we decide? We're not invoking it. We're good. Okay. All right. So then, as I told the parties, that extends your time. By five minutes, each party will be given 50 minutes. We will take a 10-minute break roughly halfway through. I allow 10 minutes for technical difficulties because they just happen to everybody. Are either council using a laptop that may kick out on Wi-Fi? No. All right, so that won't be an issue then this morning. And then the additional 10 minutes has now been absorbed into the party's time. Council, I know that you wish to make a record before we begin. Did you wish to make that now? I do, Your Honor, as quickly as I possibly can. Okay. So we object to Mr. Michael Maricini being called as a witness. There are two bases for this objection. The first is non-disclosure. I raised this before um, in a motion in limine, if the court would remember. Um, I don't think the court had all the facts at that time, and I don't know that I had an opportunity to present them. So I just want to briefly explain what, what the basis is for the um, non-disclosure objection. I got involved in this case on March 25th, 2024. Two days after that, uh, Mr. Woodnick served a, a second supplemental disclosure statement. That was the first time that Mr. Maricini was identified as a witness. The entire disclosure was a single sentence long, and I'll, I'll read it. This witness is expected to testify about his prior interactions with the petitioner, her two alleged pregnancies during their relationship, and the subsequent litiga litigation. That was the entirety of the disclosure as to Mr. Maricini. Um, as I would in any case, Your Honor, once I got a copy of the file, I started to in, uh, investigate, and I reached out to the contact person listed for Mr. Maricini, who was a lawyer in California named, named Randy Sue Pollock. Uh, I spoke to, to Ms. Pollock. Uh, she expressed extreme surprise. She had never heard of this case. She had never heard of Mr. Woodnick. Uh, she had no idea why I was calling her. I told her that her client had been listed as a witness and that I wanted to know if he was going to come to trial or not. If he was, I may want to speak to him. I want to depose him. She said that she would get back to me and let me know. Um, she sent me an email next day, um, dated April 19th, which I have a copy of, and I'll, I'll put it into the record if Your Honor would allow. Um, she said to me in writing, my client will not be testifying, referring to Mr. Maricini. I thought, great, one less person, uh, one less time uh, issue to deal with. That remained uh, my understanding until uh, the morning of April 30th, when I received a new disclosure from Mr. Woodnick that totally changed the, the landscape. This was the first time that I had heard there was an issue of fake medical records with Mr. Maricini and my client in California some eight years ago. Um, that's why I literally within an hour of seeing that information, I filed an emergency motion for a uh, court hearing. The court unfortunately took two and a half weeks and then denied that. So I was not given an opportunity to explain the problem. Um, here we are, Your Honor, the morning of trial. I still don't know what Mr. Maricini did today. That is a complete violation of Rule 49. The whole purpose of the disclosure rules is to avoid surprise. And yet here we are, surprise, waiting to see what he's going to say. That's improper. The second issue, Your Honor, deals with this California court restraining order. I think you have a copy of it. It's one of our trial exhibits. We have a court order from the state of California that prohibits Mr. Maricini from being 100 yards of Ms. Uh, Owens. He's in violation of it right now. 
There is no exception for court appearances. She is so terrified that she may not be able to sit here during this trial. There, under the full faith and credit clause of the U.S. Constitution and also under federal law, this court is required to enforce that order as it is written. You can't change it. You can't modify it. You can't discard it. And yet here we are. So for those two reasons, I would ask the court to exclude Mr. Marichini. Thank you. Response? We do it in 30 seconds, Judge. Number one, you already ruled on this. And number two, uh, there's a lack of transparency in the comments because number one, Your Honor already saw uh, Mr. Marichini's correspondence to Mr. Gingras as to why he didn't want to talk to him. Uh, and um, number two, um, Mr. Marichini is here and is available. And certainly Mr. Gingras could have walked out in the hallway and talked to him, but instead he called 911. Thank you. Your Honor, just very, very briefly, the whole point here is I wanted to talk to Mr. Marichini. I wanted to interview him either informally, which I would do in any case, or depose him if he wouldn't participate. I couldn't do that because I didn't have contact information from him and his attorney told me he wasn't coming. So somebody lied to me. I don't know who it was, but I don't care. The disclosure rules require him to disclose everything to me so that I'm not surprised. That was not done. He shouldn't be allowed to testify. Thank you. Okay. The court did previously rule on this. My ruling will stand, but I appreciate the record. So at this point, counsel, on your client's behalf, how many people will be testifying and are they in the courtroom right now? Uh, we have three and they are, they are all here. Okay. Do we have the expert available virtually? Okay, and then counsel, from your perspective, which witnesses are you calling and are they all here? We have Mr. Eckert, and Dr. All right. All right, so what we're going to do at this time is we're going to swear everybody in. That gives the parties a little bit more time. So I'm going to have anyone who is being called as a witness, to please raise your right hand to be sworn in. And I apologize, Dr. Deans, I can't see you, but if you would please raise your right hand. You and each of you do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Dr. Deans? I do. Thank you. All right. And counsel may or may not choose to make an opening statement. Just as a strategic method, sometimes attorneys choose to reserve their time for testimony and evidence. That being said, does either party wish to make an opening statement? I do, Your Honor. I'll take about 15 seconds. Okay. When Your you're Honor, uh, the file notwithstanding, I'm actually a fan of keeping things simple. I believe that simple is better. That means focusing on what matters and filtering out what does not matter. We're here on a petition to establish paternity. Uh, it, unless I'm missing something, the only possible outcomes of that petition are that paternity is established or it is not. There's no baby in this case. There's nothing to establish. Our position is that the petition is moot, that the court can simply deny it, dismiss it, use whatever uh, verbiage you want to. The only remaining issue is, I guess, this issue of uh, Mr. Eckerd's request for a judgment of non-paternity. Uh, my position is he bears the burden of proving that. There's absolutely no evidence to support that. Um, and Ms. Owens, at the end of the day, she was pregnant, Your Honor. The fact that she was pregnant negates everything else that you're about to hear. Whether she lied to an ex-boyfriend eight years ago has nothing to do with whether she was pregnant last year. Nothing. It does affect credibility, but as you're about to hear from our medical expert, there's objective proof of pregnancy that does not require relying on her credibility. That simple. So we would like the court to dismiss, deny the petition. Uh, there's no basis for fees. There's no fee request in front of you right now. So I, I, I guess you could offer some guidance on what the court would do in the future, but there is no, there is no sanctions request to grant. There's no fee motion. Counsel, did you wish to make an opening statement? Uh, generally, no, but today, yes. Okay. Judge, uh, we stand by our pretrial statement in detail as verified by Mr. Eckert. I'll remind the court that the court not only has the establishment of paternity matter, which was filed um, woefully and appropriately, as we'll hear today, and as you know from uh, prior pleadings in this matter, but we've got the collateral protective order proceedings, the orders of uh, protection related to that that Your Honor indicated we already watched or we're watching the videos related. That's all before the court today, and Your Honor has authority to make the findings today uh, that the petition was filed in bad faith that there was pervasive fraud on this court in multiple proceedings, uh, and that uh, attorney's fees and sanctions can be ordered in this matter. All right, so now we'll begin. Yes, oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Did I was going to call. Oh, okay. Yeah, so as, as witnesses come up to the witness stand, you can bring water with you. The exhibits will be displayed for you. Please let us know if you can't see it. And counsels, you should each be made a presenter when it's your turn. But if you haven't, let Layla know. Judge, are you keeping time and what's our time? Yeah. 
Sure. Uh, petitioners at four minutes, 34 seconds. Respondents at one minute, 11 seconds. Thank you. Uh -huh. When you're ready. Your Honor, call uh, Laura Owens. All right. Laura, how are you feeling? Um, nervous. Okay. Just breathe and we'll get through this really quick, okay? Um, Lori, we've talked about the timeline of events and I want to just really quickly run through. When did you first meet Mr. Eckerd? Um, May the 17th, I believe we connected on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, and did it, you, were you intimate with him at some point? Yes. When was, what day was that? May 20th. At some point after you were intimate with him, did you test positive for pregnancy? Yes. Do you remember the first time that happened? Um, it was the evening of May 31st. Okay. After you tested positive the first time, did you do anything to confirm the pregnancy? Yes. What did you do? I went to Banner Health Urgent Care the next day, and I took a test there. Uh, uh, on June 1st? Yes. If you can look at the screen in front of you there, is it says Exhibit 2. That's actually the wrong number. Um, but that's a, a, a printout of the, um, the positive pregnancy test you received from Banner? Yes. On June 1st? Yes. Okay. And um, after you... About the second positive test, what did you do? Um, I told Mr. Eckerd. All right. Did you go see him at some point to talk about it? Yes. What day was that? Uh, June 17th. Um, when you, and you went over to his house, I understand? Yes. When you showed up at his house, did he ask you to take a pregnancy test? He did. Did you know in advance that he was going to give you that test? I did not. Did you take the test in front of him? Yes, I did. Did he actually watch you pee on a stick? Yes, he did. What was the result of that? It was positive. Um, after you. Uh, had the third test that was positive with him. Did he send you an email at some point to talk about the, uh, the situation? Yes. All right. Looking at the screen in front of you, is this the email that Mr. Eckerd sent you on, it looks like June 21st? Yes. Um, the third paragraph down has some highlighted text, uh, and I'll just read it. Um, considering you only performed oral sex on me and no vaginal penetration occurred, the chances of you being pregnant seem considerably low. Although, again, maybe rubbing up against one another allowed a sperm to make its way inside you it's a very low probability. Nevertheless, it is one. Uh, first of all, Clayton wrote that to you. Yes? Yes. And did you have conversations with him where he told you that he thought you were pregnant? Yes. Uh, is that verbal conversations or text or email or all three? Um, all three. Um, okay. Moving right along. After um, you got this email on, and I'll move to admit, Your Honor, uh, Petitioner's Exhibit A2. Any objections? A2 is received. Um, after the email of June 21st, um, what happened next in terms of uh, your proceeding to verify the pregnancy? Um, I took additional tests. Um, did you have a sonogram done in California? Yes, I did. Um, and where was that done? Planned Parenthood. And you understand, and I'm sure Mr. Woodnick will ask you about this, um, Planned Parenthood has not been able to verify that you were ever seen there. Do you understand that? Yes. Can you explain that? Yes. I went under a fake name when I went there. Okay. Um, and you had a sonogram done. Did you ever present that sonogram as evidence in any court proceeding anywhere? No. We have obviously presented it in, in this case. But you, uh, you've admitted already that you changed the name at the top or the location. Did you, did you change the name at the top of the sonogram? Of the location, yes. Why did you do that? I changed it because Mr. Eckerd was being threatening towards me and I didn't want him to know where I had gone and try to track down my providers. Okay. Um, after the Planned Parenthood sonogram, do you remember approximately what date that was? I know you signed a declaration, I think it said July 2nd, and then there may be a, a conflict. Do you remember what date that was? It, went um, it was actually the end of June. Okay. Did you, were you in California both weekends? Is that the, what the confusion was? Yes. All right. After the uh, sonogram in California, uh, around July 23rd, did something happen um, in terms of you passing tissue or anything like that? Yes. Can you explain briefly what happened on July 23rd? Yeah, um, I wasn't having any symptoms at all, but I did pass um, tissue that um, looked like it could have potentially been a miscarriage. I'm not sure if you're going to pull that up or if I was looking for something. Uh, I'll, yeah. wait, I'll wait. Till okay, then. yeah. Um, it looked like it could potentially be miscarriage tissue, but I, I wasn't sure. Did you seek any medical care after July 23rd after the tissue passed? Yes. Related to that? Yes. What did you do? Um, I texted a, a hotline for um, pregnancy and miscarriage 
questions. And I also did an appointment with a telemedicine doctor as well. Okay. And what did they tell you? Video I'm visit. I'm sorry. What did they tell you? Um, they back on hold on one second. Overruled. Go ahead. Oh, that means to go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, uh, what was the question? What did they tell me? Yeah. What, what information did they give you, if any? Um, they told me that I needed to monitor myself, um, but that they felt like unless I had more symptoms, I didn't need to worry that it was a, a miscarriage. Okay. And after July 23rd, did you take any other pregnancy tests um, shortly after that date? Yes, I did. What date? Um, I believe the 27th and then also August 1st before I filed this case. Okay. So the day that you filed, before you filed this case, how many pregnancy tests did you have? Uh, five. So you had one on uh, May 31st. You had one on June 1st at Danner. You had another one on June 17th with Clayton. Uh, you took one. I have my notes say July 25th, but I think you just testified maybe a little day or two differently. Um, August 1st also. So five positive tests before you filed this case. Yes. Did you have any, any negative tests before you filed this case? Uh, no. Um, Laura, Clayton has argued, let me, let me go back to the night of May 20th. Um, you have, in your deposition, you said that Clayton actually had sexual intercourse with you. Do you recall that? Yes. And was that true? Yes. Um, did you tell him that night that you did not want to have sex? Yes. And did he honor that request? No. Laura, you've heard Clayton argue at various places in this case that you were trying to trap him in some way by what happened here. Can you explain, if you were trying to trap him, why did you tell him that you didn't want to have sex? Objection leading. I wasn't trying to trap him. Hold on one second. Sorry. Sustain. Okay. Um, but you never, that first night with Clayton, you never said to him, let's, let's do it all night long or anything like that. No. Sustain. Did you, did you tell Clayton that you wanted to have sex that night? No. Okay. Um, Laura, let's switch uh, very quickly. Actually, let's go back to our timeline. Um, after you filed the case on August 1, um, did you do anything in terms of DNA testing to verify, again, verify the pregnancy and verify that Clayton was the father? Yes. What did you do to verify that? Um, we took a test. Well, I paid for a test in August at RavGen, which was the lab that he chose um, to conduct the test. And I paid for it, and he did not schedule his part of the test. So uh, according to my notes, August 15th uh, was, was the RavGen initial booking for $725 you paid. Is that accurate? Yes. Leading. What date did you initially book the RavGen test for? August 15th. And what did you pay for it? $725. Okay. And why didn't that test go forward? Or did it go forward? Uh, Clayton did not schedule his part of the test. Okay. So you had to cancel? Yes. Did you eventually successfully complete the testing? Yes. What, were the out, what was the result of that? It was inconclusive, little to no fetal DNA. Okay. Do you remember when that result came back? Um, I believe we took the test September 28th, so shortly thereafter. All right. After the RavGen results came back, did you have any further pregnancy tests? Yes. Uh, do you remember the date, uh, when and where that happened? Yeah. Um, it was October the 16th, I believe, um, and it was at any lab test now. And was that a quantitative test? Was it, did it involve a blood draw? It was a blood draw, I guess. And do you remember the results of that test? It still showed that I was pregnant. Okay. At some point, did you eventually learn that you were no longer pregnant? Yes. What date did that happen? Um, November 15th, I believe. And was that... Go to a facility called Mom Doc. Yes. And did you take how many? Did they give you a pregnancy test then? Yes. More than one test. Um, they just gave me one test. And, and the results were both negative. Uh, yes. After um, you learned that you were no longer pregnant, November fourteenth, did you file anything further in this case? No. You, what was your intent? Uh, we, we, if we go back to the um, any lab test now, October sixteenth, you filed a request for mediation two days after that, correct? Correct. What was your intent in doing that? I wanted to dismiss the case. I wanted to go over the test results. Did you know, did you know how to dismiss the case? No. So you were, you were making an effort to let Clayton know that you, weren't, you thought the pregnancy was probably ending badly and you wanted to drop the case. Objection mm -hmm. leading. Thanks. All right. Um, Laura, let's, let's switch topics briefly. Um, Clayton lied, did Clayton ever lie to you about real estate contracts? Yes. Can you briefly explain what happened with that? Yeah. Um, I first met him as a realtor and I um, had him make two offers on two different properties um, on the same day and found out he never submitted those offers, but when, I signed them. When were the offers submitted? May 24th. And when did you find out that, that, they, that Clayton didn't send them to the, to the seller? May 25th, because they were only good for 24 hours. 
So he lied to you and said that he had sent offers in that he didn't. Correct. Objection, argumentative, and objection relevance. Goes Overruled. To, go ahead. Uh, correct. Um, did, at some point, did you file a complaint against Clayton with the real estate board? Yes, I did. Did you receive a response from the board regarding your complaint? Yes. What was that response? They found him in professional violation of a couple of things, but I can't remember what they were. Laura, that issue with the real estate contracts happened before you tested positive for pregnancy, if I'm understanding the timeline correctly. Is that right? Yes. Um, did you ever learn why Clayton did not submit those offers or why he said he didn't? Um, he said I didn't because he said I wasn't. I had no intention of purchasing real estate. Were you, did you have an intention of purchasing real estate? Yes. Uh, did you wind up purchasing real estate? Yes. Um, let's talk about proof of pregnancy again. Um, so did you take a photo of the test that you took on May 31st? Uh, yes, I did. All right. Um, I think, attach, if you saw that. Yeah, you saw that yeah, I still have the exhibit. So attached to this email are a couple of photos here. One. One's right there, um, day 11, it says. Is that is this a photograph that you took? Yes, day 11 is one I took. And I believe the one above is one Clayton took. Oh, okay. So so the one that says day 11 is a photo that you took, and you sent that to Clayton at or around that time? Yes. And then the one above that is, um, it says day 21, and it also appears to show positive. And that's uh, the test that Clayton gave you? Yes. And he sent that picture back to you? Uh, yeah, he took it right after the test at his place. All right. And the test that you took at Banner and the results that you received there on June 1st, um, did you send that to Clayton? Yes. And that's exhibit, it's our exhibit A1, and I'll move to admit that one as well, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection to A1, Your Honor. a one received. Okay. Laura, did you do, regarding the Banner test, the Day 11 test, or the Day 21 test, those three tests, did you do anything at all to tamper with the results of those tests? No. Did you take any drugs, hormones, or any substance at all to, to affect the outcome? No. Did you use someone else's urine to, to change the outcome? No. Um, Laura, in Clayton's deposition, um, this exact issue came up about him uh, giving you the test and wanting you to take it in front of him. And he testified, I'll just, I'll just read uh, from his deposition. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure she didn't bring anything into the bathroom, but she couldn't pee right in front of me because she said she had stage fright. So I closed the door so she would, uh, so she would be able to pee. Is that deposition testimony truthful? I did have stage fright. He was right. I did tell him that, but I did pee in front of him because he insisted that I did that. Okay. And when he sent you the email on July 19th, two days after, I'm sorry, uh, June 19th, two days after you went to his house and took that third test in front of him, did he say anything at all about the fact that you closed the door and couldn't pee in front of him? No. Okay. Um, and Clayton, he obviously saw the first pregnancy test that you took. You saw the second one that you took, or the results of it anyway, uh, and the third one that you took in front of him. Um, if we go back to um, Exhibit A2, at the end of this email, Clayton says, uh, at the very top of the page, he says, I say all this, and, and the, in the email, he talks about the fact he thought you might be on some uh, medication that affected the results, I guess. Um, but he says, uh, at the top paragraph, he's, Your Honor, I'm going to object. Offered potential piece of evidence that hasn't been admitted. Uh, He's giving quite a narrative. That has been admitted. Yeah, two has been received. If you look in the top left hand corner, if there's a green sticker, that means it's been received. My if it's brown, it means it was declined. Go ahead, counsel. Laura, the question I have for you regarding the first paragraph at the top of the page there um, Clayton wrote, or the email says, this is why it's important for us to do the paternity test because there's no question that if it comes back positive, it is mine. Did Clayton ever tell you or, that he wanted you to have a paternity test done? Yes. Did he ever say to you that if you didn't file this case that he would? Yes. How many times? Um, I don't know how many times. A bunch of times. Um, at some point before you filed this case, did you hire a lawyer to help you? Yes. And who was that? Bonnie Platter. And she never appeared in any case for you, is my understanding. Is that right? She, yeah, she never appeared. Okay. But what did you have her do uh, with regard to... Clayton and, and the pregnancy issue? I wanted to prevent filing a case publicly in court um, for both of our sakes. I didn't want it to be public and thought that we could um, come up with a parenting plan if, in fact, the pregnancy was Clayton's. I thought we could come up with it um, on our own without having to involve the court. Okay. So you, before you filed this case, you made an effort to work with him to get the test done privately without the court being involved? Yes. And I, I hired the attorney. I said I would pay for it. Did he hire anyone? 
yeah. that's to your knowledge. Um, Laura, let's move forward to look at exhibit um, A3, which, um, have you ever seen this before? Um, yes. Can you, can you tell us what it is? Um, this is the, uh, this is a message in my patient portal for, um, I'm part of a domestic violence brain injury program in, uh, at Barrow. And this is a conversation with my uh, doctor there. Okay. Did you send this email? It looks like it's an email dated June, June 28th um, from you to a Dr. Glynis uh, Zeman, Z-I-E-M-A-N. Did you write that email? Yes. Your Honor, I move to admit um, exhibit, whatever that is. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. A3 is uh, received. Uh, Laura, in this email at the very top there, you write to Dr. Zeman that you went to Planned Parenthood while in California, uh, and you said they did a scan there, uh, was confirmed that you were pregnant, uh, and that they saw they saw a sack. Does that refresh your recollection about the date that you went to see Planned Parenthood? Yes. And is the statement that you made to Dr. Zeman truthful? Yes. Did you, when you wrote that, did you know that anyone would ever see that in the light of day other than you and Dr. Zeman? Nope. I had no idea. Okay. Um, Okay. Can you explain why you changed the name uh, at the top of the sonogram that we talked about before from Planned Parenthood? I think, I don't know if you answered that before. Yeah. Um, I just didn't want Clayton to know where I had gone to get the, the sonogram because he had been intimidating before. Um, if the court can help me switch from my exhibits to Clayton's. Sure. If you scroll down to where, yep, yeah, that exactly. Now go all the way to the bottom. There should be an R. Keep going I, if you're yeah, able to. Stop there. Uh, I don't see that. It's right. Oh, right. It's tiny. I'm blind. I'm blind. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And we're going to go. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I want to see Clayton's exhibit. Though. Yeah. You're going to scroll all the way down. Ah, respondents. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, Laura, looking at uh, Respondents Exhibit 31, I don't, I don't know why that doesn't match. Uh, this No, that's not it either. These are not the same as... So uh, what you want to do is, it may not be the exhibit numbers that the attorneys labeled it as being, those are the court uh -huh. designations. I'm looking, so, for, I'm looking for his Exhibit 31. All right, so if you look for his Exhibit 31, that does show that it is Exhibit 31. Exhibit 31 on, on his exhibit list is listed Petitioner Faking Ultrasound. Ah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize it was a video. There we go. That's what I wanted to see right there. Laura, um, exhibit, Clayton's Exhibit 31 is a, um, appears to be an email from you to Clayton. It says ultrasound video proof. Clayton, here is my 100 billion percent real, real ultrasound video. You recognize that? Um, it's not an email that I sent, but I've seen it since. Okay. Did, well, you answered my question. Do you know, what, first of all, what, that, what this exhibit shows? Do you know what it shows? Um, I do now. Um, Laura, did you, if this, assuming that what, what we're looking at here is, is meant to be an email from you, did you send this to Clayton? I did not. Did you ever send Clayton an email with an ultrasound video attached to it? I did not. Do you have any idea why Clayton would think that you sent him an email like this? Well, yeah, that has my signature on it. Well, that's a fair statement. Um, but you didn't send this. Do you know who did? I have sus my suspicions, but I can't be. No, let's hear it. I'd like to hear it. Um, I have a suspicion that an ex of mine sent this to Clayton. Who? Which ex? Greg Gillespie. Is he in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. Why do you think Greg, Greg Gillespie sent this? Um, because Greg has hacked my email before and has admitted to hacking other people's emails. Okay. So you're, you're obviously under oath, under penalty of perjury. You did not send that email and you don't know who did. Correct. Okay. Um, let's talk about going back to our exhibit A5. Got it. Whoops. Um, so can you tell us what exhibit A5 is? Do you recognize this? Yes. Um, is this a receipt? Uh, that well, it's an email, but does this reflect the uh, Rav gem that you talked about before? Yes. Okay, and that was August fifteenth that you made that payment. Yes. Um, and then later on here, at the bottom, um, you indicate. Uh, let's see here. Friday. This appears to be an email from you, Friday, August eighteenth. Did you write that email? 
Yes. You send that to, well, it looks like to Clayton and also CC Ravgen. Yes. And it states here that unfortunately Clayton has refused to take the prenatal paternity test. Is that accurate? Yes. Is that the reason why the test didn't happen in mid-August? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit A5. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. A5 is received. Okay. Um, let's look at uh, Clayton's Exhibit 9. Hopefully, there we go. Um, Laura, do you recognize this Exhibit, Exhibit 9? Um, yes. Uh, this appears to be an email from you to Clayton dated October 14th, 2023. Um, and this is an email that you sent him? Yes. All right. In this email, you, first of all, you're, you're saying uh, some reference to a sonogram video, and you said it matches up with the still video that Dave sent me. I assume that we're talking about Dave. Yes. Um, and you told him this was not my ultrasound. I stand by that 100%. Um, did, did Dave Neal ever? Did, did Dave, well, first of all, who's Dave Neal? Dave Neal is a content creator. And at some point, did Dave send you a sonogram video and ask if it was yours? Yes. What did you say to him? I said it was not mine. Did you ever have a sonogram video of any kind with Clayton? No. Did you ever send a sonogram video to anyone um, claiming that it showed the pregnancy with Clayton? Uh, no. Um, if we go down to the second paragraph, Laura, um, I'm going to see if I can highlight here. Um, and again, this is Utah. I can't highlight. Um, the second sentence in the second paragraph, uh, I'll read it. I think you were very, very high that night, and you forgot that when you were on top of me, top of you on the on your couch, you were begging me to let you put it in for 30 seconds, then 25, then 20, 15, 10, and I said no each time. Then I thought you were just fingering me, but you stuck it in briefly. First of all, you wrote those words to Clayton, right? Yes. And um, were those words accurate? Yes. That what happened that night on on May 20th? Yes. Um, when you sent this email to Clayton, did he ever respond back to you and deny that that's what happened? No. Let's talk now about the last positive test that you took. Um, let me see here. It says exhibit A9, but that's not it. Um, the, you went to any lab test now at some point. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I did. And, and um, wh when did that happen? On October 16th, I believe. Okay. Why? Again, these, these aren't matching up. Are we on? Yeah, we're on his. That's fine. Okay. I need new glasses. There it is. Okay. Um, so, Laura, looking at exhibit A9, do you recognize what this is? Yes. What is it? Um, it's the results from the test I took at any lab test now. And um, is it your understanding that that result, it says 102 age, um, is it your understanding that you were testing pregnant at uh, still in October, mid October 2023? Yes. Production misstates the evidence. Overruled. Um, be addressed in cross examination. So, um, did you, again, did you do anything at all to tamper with this test, take any drugs, inject yourself with anything at all that, to affect this? Uh, no, I did not. And this was a blood draw that came out of your arm? Yes. Did you, did you supply them the, the blood yourself or did a phlebo phlebotomist take it out of your arm? A phlebotomist took okay. it. Um, so two days after this is when you filed the request for mediation, I think in this case, right? And, yes. And after that date, you filed nothing further. This was two days, two days prior to when I filed for mediation. Did, did you pretty much understand that when you got this test, that that was probably not going to be a viable pregnancy? That it was probably not. Yeah, but I still saw that it said anything over four was pregnant. So, um, Your Honor, I move to admit Exhibit A nine. No objection. A nine. Uh, <laughs> and A eleven is going to be. Can you can you tell us if you recognize what this is? Um, the records from Mom Doc. Okay, and this is a an OBGYN facility that you visited. Yes. And according to um, the date here, it says uh, November 14th, 2023. Is that accurate? Yes. And so this is when you went in and had a test done that came back negative, correct? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, move to admit A A11 if we have no any. objection. A11 is received. All right. Um, Laura, let's look at um, exhibit A6. Can you tell us what exhibit A6 is? Um, yes, that's me um, showing my pregnant stomach. And when did you create that video? Do you know? Um, September the 19th. Okay. Um, did you, let me see here. Your Honor, I'll move to admit A6. No objection, Your Honor. A6 is received. Uh, and let's look, look at A7. Um, it's a similar video. 
Did you did you take this video yourself? Or it looks like a, you're obviously not yeah. holding the camera, but what you put on. Yeah, stand. I put it on the stand. Yeah. Uh, you took this video. Do you remember the date of this? Um, October the 9th. Okay. I don't know if it showed anything there, but it's real short. Okay. Laura, between May 20th and November 14th, we've established November 14th, you were no longer pregnant. Did you experience any pregnancy symptoms? Yes. Can you explain what those symptoms were? Yeah, I had very bad morning sickness and nausea and um, my breasts were very tender. Do you remember how much you weighed um, when you went to see mom doc? I believe it was 121. I'm sorry. No, not mom doc. I thought you were meaning in, in May. I was 133 at, at mom doc. I'm sorry about that. So around the time that this was taken, your weight was 133. What do you weigh today? Um, 91 pounds. Will you stand up and show the court and everyone what you look like now compared to the picture behind you? Can you turn, can you come out from behind the screen there? And just, just do a little turn for us. Um, Laura, you, that's enough. Thanks. Um, for the last time, were you pregnant with Clayton? Yes. Did you think that you were pregnant with Clayton? Yes. Do you have any reason to think that you weren't when you filed this case? No. Did you lie about being pregnant with Clayton? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, counsel, you've used 29 minutes and 30 seconds. When you're ready. And Your Honor, is it okay if I proceed from the podium? Will the court be able to hear me? Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely fine. We have a we have a media cam or we have a media microphone on the podium, correct? Okay. All right. When you're ready. Good morning, Ms. Hodges. Good morning. You understand that you're currently under oath and must testify truthfully today, correct? Correct. You understand the difference between the truth and the lie, right? Obviously, yes. And you would agree with me that fabricating or doctoring evidence is dishonest and unreasonable behavior, right? Right. And you're aware that lying under oath is a crime in the state of Arizona, correct? Correct. And the reason I'm asking these questions and so on is because I've cross-examined you before, right? Right. I cross-examined you in the injunction against harassment during the court of offenses on November 2nd of 2020, right? Right. And during this hearing, that hearing, you'd recall that I gave you the opportunity to correct the record and come clean about any false information or testimony you may have provided, right? Right. And you told me you had nothing to correct, right? Correct. And then you proceeded to lie to the court. Objection ar argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. You testified that you were 100% pregnant on November 2nd, correct? Correct. And you testified that you were 24 weeks pregnant specifically. Correct. I'd like you to take a look at your Exhibit A11, please. She's got them in front. I can see. Yeah. Ms. Owens, this appointment that you attended at Mom Doc on November 14th of 2023 was 12 days after I cross-examined you, right? Correct. And during that cross-examination, I pointed out that you had no legitimate medical records to support the pregnancy, right? I mean, you said that, but I don't agree with it. No. At this appointment, Ms. Owens, it was confirmed that you were not pregnant, correct? Correct. These mom doc records also indicate that you were diagnosed with OS, polycystic ovarian, right? I've had that since I was 17, yes. Okay. And you'll recall at the hearing on November 2nd, we specifically questioned you about any physical health diagnosis that you had, right? Um, I don't remember, but if you say so, I then yes. You failed to testify that you had PCOS. Um, I, I can't say one way or the other if I did or didn't. I'll take your word for it, but it's not something that I um, live with daily. Also, you also failed to tell me that in 2015, doctors Chan and B diagnosed you with cancer and apparently with one of your own. They did not. Okay. So as you sit here today, you're denying that that happened. I will absolutely deny that that happened. Now, for what you reported, what you self-reported to the mom doctor, they listed a spontaneous abortion date of August 12th of 2023 at eight pregnant, correct? They listed a lot of things that were inaccurate here. I never told them that I had an abortion that date. Okay, well, spontaneous abortion, if I were to tell you, is 
a miscarriage. She would agree with me that they listed a miscarriage date of August 12th of 2023 at eight weeks pregnant. Um, yes, but they, I also never was pregnant in 2019, so I don't know where that came from. And Ms. Owens, based on what you know about pregnancy, pregnancy, as someone who's allegedly been pregnant three or four times in the past, you miscarried at eight weeks pregnant, that wouldn't line up with your alleged conception date with Mr. Eckert, would it? I don't know, and I'm telling you, I never told them that I was eight weeks pregnant and lost that on, on August 12th. In your mom dog record, also in your deposition, Self-reported that you passed two sacks with the period to have a membrane, correct? Correct. And I'd like you to take a look at what we marked as Exhibit 49 to your deposition transcript. Ms. Owens, you recall sitting for a deposition on March 1st of 2024, correct? Correct. And your counsel at the time following that deposition was provided with a copy of this transcript as well as you, correct? Correct. And you didn't take any opportunity to correct this transcript. I actually didn't see it until you guys sent it to us. I, my former counsel never showed this to me. So. Okay. Well, you're aware that this has been marked as a copy of your deposition transcript for March 1st of 2023, correct? Correct. And this is a true and accurate copy of the transcripts that you received, correct? From your office, yes. I did not get one prior to that. I do have a make the 49, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. Is that A or B, counsel? I apologize. Um, I, I guess it would be, Your Honor. B49 is received. Ms. Owens, during your deposition, um, specifically on page 149, lines 18 through 21, you testified that you started spotting, meaning you were having a light period in August or September, correct? Um, I wasn't having a light period. It didn't, I didn't end up getting a period until November. Well, your I said light spotting, but sorry. I said light spotting, but that wasn't a period. Deposition 151, line 24. You claim you passed the two sacks here to have a membrane in September or October, correct? Correct. But in the mom doc records, you claim you passed the two sacks a few weeks after your alleged ultrasound at Planned Parenthood, right? Um, several weeks after. There's an inconsistency there, right? Right. I wasn't sure what the date was. No OBGYN or qualified medical professional conducted an ultrasound, performed a physical examination, or performed a blood test to confirm your alleged pregnancy on or before August 1st of 2023, right? Wrong. Okay, let's talk about that because I suspected you would answer that this way. You claim that you had an alleged ultrasound at Planned Parenthood in Southern California, correct? Correct. And you testified during your deposition that the alleged ultrasound Van Parenthood was in Mission Viejo, California on July 7th. Of right. I did say it was there. That's where I was staying at the time in Mission Viejo. While being examined by your attorney, Mr. Ingress, you said that you went to Planned Parenthood under a fake name, right? right? But you didn't bother to provide our office the alleged name that you went to Planned Parenthood under, right? Right. And you knew that we were seeking your records with Planned Parenthood specifically because of the alleged ultrasound you had there, right? Right. So wouldn't it have made sense for you to provide our office with a copy or the name that you allegedly went to Planned Parenthood under? I felt like the whole purpose of going to Planned Parenthood is to remain anonymous and that that's one of my protections. I want to take a look at Exhibit 22. Is this a true and accurate picture of the ultrasound your sleep at Planned Parenthood in California on July of 2023. That looks like it, yes. I move to exhibit 28, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. A 28 or C. And Ms. Owens, this ultrasound image does not say Planned Parenthood. It says S M I L. So I'll call Smile for today, correct? Correct. And in your deposition, you admitted you altered this ultrasound picture to say Smile instead of Planned Parenthood, right? Correct. And you admitted in your deposition to altering this picture on the Adobe Acrobat program at your house, right? Correct. During the deposition, you testified that the date listed here of July 7th of 2023 was correct and hadn't been edited by you, right? Correct. But you later admit that you lied about this July 7th ultrasound date, right? Correct. And you execute an affidavit 
on April 16th of 2024, claiming the correct date for this already doctored ultrasound is actually July 2nd of 2024, correct? Um, correct. So I want to get this straight, so on. You initially claimed you had an ultrasound at Planned Parenthood on July 7th, which you doctored to say it was from Smile, right? Correct. Then the story changes again, and you claim that the ultrasound image should actually be dated July 2nd of 2020, right? Correct. So you changed the date on the ultrasound from July 2nd to July 7th, correct? Correct. And you utilized this altered or fake ultrasound to try to convince Mr. Eckert and the court and the media that you were pregnant with Mr. Eckert. This was, this was never submitted to the court. You're aware that Planned Parenthood has no record of an ultrasound, correct? Under my real name, yes, I'm more. And again, established, you provide our office with the name of your, that you allegedly went to Planned Parenthood under, correct? Correct. You never attended an appointment with Planned Parenthood. Yes, I did. This is a true and accurate copy of our request and response from Planned Parenthood regarding your records dated April 26th of 2024, correct? Um, correct. I don't believe I've seen this, but I, I have no idea. And counsel, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'll stop the clock like I've done for the others. Um, we're going to give you a microphone because as I anticipated, there was a problem picking up. We work with what we have, right? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Thank you. I'll ask that a question one more time, Your Honor. Ms. Owens, is Exhibit 29 uh, is a copy of our request and the response from Planned Parenthood regarding your records in April 26th of 2024, correct? Um, correct. Move for the admission of Exhibit 29, Your Honor. Objection. No objection. The 29 is received. And while you've indicated today that you went to Planned Parenthood under a fake name, this letter actually indicates that you had scheduled an appointment for July 2nd, but that you failed to attend. Correct. It also indicates that the ultrasound image that you claimed was from Planned Parenthood was not from Planned Parenthood because it was not consistent with ultrasound images generated by their practice, right? Um, not by the one in Mission VAO, correct. Ms. Owens, these are yes or no questions. This document states that the ultrasound image you have claimed is from Planned Parenthood is not consistent with ultrasound images generated by their practice, right? By that practice, but as they said, it, I could have been seen by another different ent entity. Ms. Owens, you're well aware that this request covered all of Orange County and San Bernardino County. It didn't cover Los Angeles, though. So now you're saying you went to Planned Parenthood in Los Angeles? Yes. So you're telling us you went to Planned Parenthood in Los Angeles on the day of trial today? Yes. Okay. When did you go to Planned Parenthood in Los Angeles? Exactly when I said I went. When was that? July 2nd. Okay. I'd like to go back to the two SACs you passed. So again, in your deposition, you claimed you passed them in September or October, right? Um, yes. But then you changed the date and claimed that you passed these two SACs on July 23rd of 2020, right? Right. And you actually had an appointment scheduled with Dr. McCool, who you claimed is your high-risk perinatologist for July 24th of 2020, right? Right, that I canceled days prior. Okay, so you canceled that appointment. Days prior. And you rescheduled it to August 7th, right? Um, yes, if that's the date that I did. So wouldn't you agree with me that for someone who has had miscarriages in the past and who has an alleged high-risk pregnancy, it would be prudent to attend an in-person appointment shortly after passing two sacs? Um, well, that's why I asked the doctors online. Oh, and these are yes or no questions. I'm, I'm looking at your attorney, but you need who's to look shaking? at question for me. Okay, can you ask the question again? Wouldn't you agree that as someone who has a high-risk pregnancy that allegedly passed two sacks on July 23rd of 2023, it would have been important 
for you to see your high risk perinatologist immediately after that happening. Well, that's why I scheduled the, that's why I immediately contacted telemedicine. It was at night. You contacted a telemed provider instead of attending the appointment with your high risk perinatologist. It had already been canceled days prior. So you had four appointments scheduled with doctors and told that you would never attend, right? Correct. And you intentionally failed to attend those appointments because all of those appointments would have resulted in a medical record that stated you were not pregnant, right? Objection argumentative. Sustained to the form of the question, but you can ask the question in a different way. I'll move on here. During the November 2nd hearing, you denied that the DNA test results came back with little to no fetal DNA, right? Um, what? During the November 2nd hearing. I said that the, the, the test was. the question, Ms. Ong? During the November 2nd hearing, you denied that the DNA test results came back with little to no fetal DNA. Ms. Ong, I see you continue. No, I didn't. I never said it didn't. I said I, it came I'm back confused. inconclusive. I'm confused about what date she's referring to. What? November 2nd. November 2nd hearing. Yeah. November 2nd hearing. Okay, again, before my time, so that's why I'm confused. I apologize. I said it was inconclusive and it was little to no fetal DNA. I never said it came back anything but that. Okay, well, today you've admitted that there was little to no, DNA, little to no fetal DNA, right? I've never said there was anything else. You also ordered and took a blood HCG test through any lab test now on October 16th of 2023, correct? Correct. And I'd like you to take a look at Exhibit 36, page 201. So this has already been admitted, so we'll move past that. By the time of this test on November 16th, you had claimed you were previously seen at Banner, Planned Parenthood, Dr. McCool, Dr. Higley, Higley and even Dr. Zeman, right? Your Honor, objection. She misstated the date. She said September 16th, I believe. It's October 16th. That can be addressed and redirected. Um, I I said that Dr. McCool's my doctor. I did not say that I had seen him. I said I had seen Dr. Higley and the rest. Correct. We'll talk about Dr. Higley, Thank you. but your answer is Would you like me to repeat the question, Ms. Owen? Um, sir. Okay. I'm going to stand here because it seems like you're looking at Mr. Gingrich quite a bit for guidance. No, I don't need I don't need guidance from from my attorney. I know how to answer the questions. By the time of your appointment for this test on October 16th of 2023, you claimed you were previously seen at Banner, Planned Parenthood, Dr. Higley, and even Dr. Z, right? Um, yes. But instead of going to any of those providers for this test, you went to an entirely new provider, correct? Um, I just went on my way home from taking the Ravgen test, actually. Yes or no questions. Um, well, I did, it wasn't a provider. It was a self-paid test. So. Okay, so you didn't go to any of your prior providers for this test, right? Correct. Okay. By your own admission, in your affidavit signed April 16th of 2024, this result of an HCG level of 102 was not consistent with pregnancy, right? Objection, misstates the testimony. Overruled. An answer. Oh, um, can you say it again? I'm sorry. By your own admission, the test result of 102 with a level for HCG is not consistent with a pregnancy. Objection. I, I, Go ahead. Go ahead. I learned that it was. Learned that it was consistent with pregnancy or was not consistent with pregnancy? Well, the test result said anything above four was pregnant. So I thought 102 was pregnant, but then I learned it was not. Would agree with me that this is not consistent with pregnancy. Um, no, I wouldn't. Um, you doctored this particular test twice, Ms. Owen, correct? Um, I doctored the test once. Okay, and when was that? Um, when I tried to send it to Dave Neal to get him to stop creating harassing videos at me. And what amount of doctors? I it was like a hundred and two thousand, I believe. Okay. So can you 
pull up Exhibit 17, page 113. So you'll recognize this as it looks like the same test from October 15, but it has an HCG level different than what you just indicated, and it says 131,902. Okay. Correct? Yes, that's. So you also doctored this test. No, I didn't know what the number was that I had made it to. Well, Ms. Owens, I agree with you. You doctored this test twice. One to say 102,000 and again to say 131,902, right? I doctored it, I guess, to say 131,902. As of October 17, 2023, when you received this test result, you had reason to believe you were not pregnant, right? Um, yes, after doing some research, yes. But then you proceeded to lie under oath at hearings before this court on October 24th, October 25th, and November 2nd, correct? That's not correct, no. Instead of telling the truth, you tampered with this HCG test to increase the level and offered that as support for a pregnancy. To a content creator, not to the court. You also testified on November 2nd, unequivocally, that your OBGYNs were Dr. McCool and Dr. Higgins, right? Right. In fact, you went so far as to state that your main OBGYN is the perinatologist, Dr. McCool, right? Correct. You further testified on November 2nd that you had last seen Dr. Higgins on last Friday, right? Right. You lied to the court when you made these statements. I had the appointment scheduled, which you guys have. Yes. Question. I know, but they, it needs to be answered. Correct. It needs to be answered. I had an appointment scheduled with him that I did not attend, but I did have an appointment scheduled. Okay, so when you say you were seen by a doctor, that's not the same as having an appointment scheduled, an appointment scheduled correct? Correct. So we would agree that you were dishonest when you said you were physically seen by Dr. Higley the Friday before the November 2nd hearing. Correct. That's a very minor thing. Cool. Stop. Stop. Yeah, really. So, you know, I mean, if this is good, I, I, I'm not comfortable if this, if the JFC crew is going to be having reactions, honestly. Okay, I'm going to stop the clock at this time. Counsel, you ask questions. Ma'am, you answer the questions. I could ask the gallery to please keep your I, You know, I think I can't. I'm still talking, ma'am. Keep your comments to a minimum or you will be asked to leave. Go ahead, counsel. So never been seen by Dr. McCool, Dr. Hickey for any medical appointment, correct? Correct. And the records from Dr. McCool's office indicate that you made four appointments that you never attended, correct? Correct. And the records from Dr. Higley's office that we obtained indicate that they have no records for you from August 2020 through the present, right? I'm, I'm sorry, you said Dr. Higley or Dr. McCool? I'm. Can I like take a minute? Can we have just a, a five-minute recess? Sure. At this time, no. Go. Ahead. What were you going to say, Council? I, I'm just concerned about our time break. That's all you. So. Well, we factored in a ten-minute break. So what we'll do is we'll take it now, and then when we come back, there will be no further breaks. So that's just something for the parties to keep in mind. We'll stand in recess. All right. Two minutes. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go with you. I want to drink water. In the witness stand. A quick time check, Judge. Sure. Petitioners at 29 minutes and 30 seconds, respondents at 22 minutes and one second.
Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Owens, you testified at the November 2nd hearing that you had a due date of February 14th of 2024, which is Valentine's Day, correct? Correct. But you don't have a single medical record to support that alleged due date, right? No. I do. I was, I, I was trying to say I do have a record. That's what I was told by Tamara Lister at Banner Health was that it would be Valentine's Day. And you're aware that the records that you provided from Banner did not indicate any due date, right? It was in conversation with her as to when the due date would be. So yes or no question. You're aware that the record you provided from Banner lists no such due date, right? It can't be answered in a yes or no manner. It's I'm saying I yes, no, or I don't know. So then can you please repeat the question? Ms. Owens, you're aware that the record from Banner that you provided, that your attorney just admitted into evidence, does not have an alleged due date of any kind on it, right? Okay, then yes. I want you to take a look at what's our exhibit 17, uh, page 110. And this is the same as your exhibit A1. This is a picture you took of a portion of a page from Banner, correct? Correct. Where is the rest of the document, Ms. Owens? Clayton had it. I'm asking you, where is the rest of the document in this particular exhibit? Um, I, I don't know, but there's nothing I was trying to hide from it. Clayton got the entire thing. Recognize you've been accused of faking records, right? Yes. And you expect the court to accept a picture of a portion of an alleged record? Um, you guys got the results you yourselves. Know. So these are yes or no questions. That's the not fair. An opportunity that's... to conduct redirect examination. You can elaborate then. Okay. I mean, that's not fair. You guys know that you have the results of this that show the same thing. So I wasn't hiding anything here. That's not, that's not fair. I have to move on, but ask the court find this non-responsive. Court will designate it as non-responsive. For someone who's been involved in court cases nonstop since at least 2016. You know what? That's not accurate. I have not been involved nonstop since 2016. I'm going to stop the clock for a moment, and I'm going to remind the parties. Counsel, you ask a question. Ma'am, you answer the question. Otherwise, we, we move into a different area that I don't think anyone wants to go into. Counsel, presume. Ms. Owens, you have been involved in court cases since at least 2016, correct? Nonstop, or are you saying since 2016? Can okay. you just rephrase the question? Answer the question as I've asked it. Been involved in court cases since 2016. No. This particular document, Exhibit A1, has three different types of highlighting on it, correct? Uh, I see two. And Isabel, if you can please pull our Exhibit 17, page 110. You'll see this is the same document, but I believe maybe when your office scanned it in, you can't see all the highlighting. So I'm going to show you ours. You see there's three different types of highlighting. Uh, yes. And you highlighted this on the same Adobe Acrobat program that you used to alter the other records, correct? Um, this was uh, the doctor highlighted point of care test results. And then I highlighted uh, first trimester pregnancy and encounter for pregnancy test on my iPhone, but it wasn't Adobe Acrobat. There's two different types of highlighting on this document, correct? Um, yes. And I want to talk to you about the date of this alleged HCP test. We can agree that a woman typically takes a pregnancy test when they miss their menstrual cycle, right? Um, well, my case was different. So these are yes or no questions. I think the answer depends. I don't get a period, so I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Okay, so you don't get a regular period. I don't. So you took this test before the missing a period, right? Correct. And between 2014 and the present, you have alleged that you were pregnant by four different men, correct? Correct. And all four of those men told you, one way or another, that they believed you fabricated those pregnancies, right? 
The first was not so specific about that. And three of them are here today, right? Correct. And they also believe that you've doctored medical records, right? Objection foundation. Sustained. I'll move on, Your Honor. Ms. Owens, each time that one of these three men refused to be in a relationship with you and questioned your pregnancy narrative, you obtained an order of protection against them, right? False. Okay, well, you have an order of protection against Mr. Greg Gillespie, correct? Correct. And he didn't believe that you were ever pregnant with his child, right? No, that's wrong. That's he had me, I went to a doctor. He had me, he told me I needed to go to the specific doctor to confirm the pregnancy, which I did. Who spoke okay, to him. Stop. I'm striking that response. The court reporter has been very clear. Everyone's talking over each other for appellate purposes. And the fact that one of the parties is paying for the court reporter, I implore you please to talk one at a time. With regards to the objection, it's overruled. Go ahead, counsel. Your Honor, I'll move on in the interest of time. Ms. Owens, you didn't file an affidavit of financial information in this case, did you? I did. When did you file that? Uh, August or September. It's with the court. Okay. It's on the record. Well, consistent with your deposition testimony and your April 16th affidavit, you would agree with me that you make approximately $200,000 a year and then have approximately $500,000 in like a money market account, right? Um, I don't have $500,000 in a money market account. Okay. But you would agree with me that you make approximately $200,000 a year? Um, it's with businesses I have with my mom. So it's proportional to us okay. with our companies. Yeah. Ms. Owens, I want to give you one more opportunity. The media is here. You know that this case has gone viral. You have an opportunity right now to come clean and start fresh. So I'm going to ask you one final time. You were never pregnant by Clayton Eckerd, correct? That is absolutely incorrect. Time check. Time check, 28 minutes, 46 seconds. Redirect when you're ready. Your Honor, I've got about three questions. Um, first of all, Laura, looking at exhibit A0, are we on, on my screen? Um, this is the timeline that we talked about before. Can you just go back over that real quick? And uh, does that accurately reflect the testimony you gave earlier regarding the, uh, your version of the events? Yes. Your Honor, I move to admit exhibit A0 under, it's a rule 1006. It's a summary of testimony. Your Honor, I would object. I don't believe this is an accurate summary of the testimony today. That, that's for All the right. fund. Sorry. O over objection, the court will receive what's been marked as A30, giving it the weight that it deserves. It doesn't okay. appear to be demonstratively. Right. Um, Laura, regarding Banner, um, there was some comment um, just a minute ago that, that you didn't produce records from Banner. To your knowledge, did you authorize Mr. Woodnick or his firm to get records from Banner? Yes. Um, and looking at Exhibit A1, um, it's not just a photo of, the first page is a photo of something, but can you tell us what the second page here is? That's from my patient portal uh, showing that I was positive for, for Banner. Okay. And to your knowledge, did Mr. Woodnick actually receive records from Banner? Did he ask for them? Yes. And did he get them? Yes. Okay. Uh, one final thing. You said before on, on uh, cross-examination that when you saw that 100, uh, 102 HCG test from, from uh, October 16th, that you believe that meant you were not pregnant. Do you understand the difference between a viable pregnancy and a non-viable one? Uh, yes. Do you believe that the 102 number that you got in October 16th of 2023 meant that you were not pregnant Objection at all? Leading. What was your understanding of that 102 number? What did it mean to you? That I was still pregnant as it was over four was what it said. Okay. Um, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. All right, ma'am, you can go sit back down. One more time, check, Judge. Sure. Uh, respondents at 28 minutes, 46 seconds. Petitioner is at 31 minutes, 14 seconds of the 15. I'm going to call your next witness when you're ready. Your Honor, petitioner calls Dr. Michael Mitchell. All right. Doctor, if you'd like to bring water with you, you may. Did we spare him already? We did. Um, good morning, Dr. Mitchell. State your name, please. Dr. Michael Mitchell. We have, <clears throat> we have about 15 minutes, so I've got to go really, really quick here. I know you're retired now. Can you tell the court what you did before you retired? I was 
the chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at St. Joseph's Hospital. I was uh, in private practice at the same time. And I was also on the teaching faculty of the Phoenix Integrated Residency Program in Obstetrics and Gynecology. Okay, so you have a medical doctorate degree? Yes. And you practice medicine in Arizona for about 30 years, is that right? That's correct. And according to the Arizona Medical Board, it, uh, it says that you were first licensed in Arizona in 1992, and your med medical license expired on March 7, 2022. Is that accurate? Yes. It's about two years ago. And you, you retired from medicine in good standing with the medical board? That's correct. Um, your Honor, I tender Dr. Mitchell as an expert in the area of uh, obstetrics and gynecology. Yeah. All right. So stipulated. Okay. Um, Dr. Mitchell, in front of you there, um, we've got uh, your CV, I guess. This is exhibit um, A12. And everything in your CV is accurate? Yes. Is that up to date and current? Yes. Okay. Um, and like you said, you served as the chairman of the obstetri obstetrics and gynecology department at St. Joseph's Hospital in Phoenix? Yes, for four in, years. In that capacity, how many children did you personally deliver? I delivered over 20,000 babies. And I think when we were talking, you explained that the success rate of a pregnancy when a woman becomes pregnant and then delivers a baby, not all of them make it. Is that right? Almost half of all pregnancies end in a miscarriage. Okay. And so if you delivered 22 or 20,000 children, how many patients did you see that didn't deliver healthy babies? Directly Sustained. to the, I'm sorry? Sustained. In addition to women that did not deliver a healthy baby, did you, or I'm sorry, in, in addition to women who delivered healthy children, did you have patients who had miscarriages? Thousands. And, and so you have extensive training and experience with, with regard to women that have non-normal pregnancies. Correct. All right, Dr. Mitchell, in, in your report here, which again is Exhibit A12, um, you summarize, there's a, there's a written report and it's going slow. Um, let me see here. Did you, did you review some records um, as part of your um, retention in this case? Yes. And your report uh, has an index of exhibits that you looked at. Um, there's a banner pregnancy test, uh, an image of some uh, issues. They're all attached to your report. Um, other than what is listed there, did you review anything else? Just the ones that I've listed. Okay. And after you performed that initial review, you asked for some medical records. Um, you had a question regarding medications? Yes. And did you get those records? Yes, I did. Do you recall where they're from? From Barrow Neurologic Institute. You're familiar with Barrow? Very familiar. They're at St. Joseph's Hospital. That's part of the... over 99% probability. Okay, and can you explain what facts support that conclusion? That you, the facts that you considered anyway. I am kind of of the uh, uh, Sergeant Friday of Dragnet. I only take in the facts, the bare facts that I are known to be provable. Number one, there was intimacy of some, some type disputed what exactly it was. Number two, he had a positive pregnancy test at a lab at Banner, which means that there's a 99% chance that that's a positive pregnancy. Number three, she had a negative test or little or no fetal DNA found on a uh, test in late September looking for fetal DNA in the blood. What that tells me is that by that point, at the end of September, the pregnancy had failed, that even though she still had a positive pregnancy test, it was no longer a viable pregnancy. The fourth thing is, is that she still had a positive pregnancy test in the blood of 102 on October 16th, which again, greater than 99% positive that she was pregnant. And the fact that between June 1st and October 16th, she's got two laboratory proven pregnancy tests that indicates that all of the urine pregnancy tests, any other pregnancy tests that she had done likely are also demonstrably positive. And the final thing is, is when she had uh, bleeding in, in uh, November, and then a couple of days later had a negative pregnancy test at the mom doc. It 
also illustrates one that the pregnancy finally was completed. So what happened was she had a pregnancy. It failed at some point. There is no way of knowing exactly when. Frequently, very frequently, when people miscarry, they're incomplete. Some of it miscarries. The fetus is no longer alive, but you still contain, continue to have a positive pregnancy test because there's still tissue there that hasn't been expelled. That finally happened in November when that pregnancy was completed, when that miscarriage was completed. Okay, um, Dr. Mitchell, um, Mr. Eckert has said that um, he doesn't believe that a pregnancy was possible here because there was no intercourse. Do you have an opinion about that? Uh, uh, regarding general, not regarding him or her, but in general. Well, it's uh, said that men are like basketball players. They dribble before they shoot. They also dribble afterwards. and. If you are rubbing genitalia together, it is possible to get pregnant. Um, how much weight would you assign to the fact that Mr. Ecker denied sexual intercourse? Is that, is that significant to the question of whether she was pregnant or is it a minor point? It has nothing to do with whether she was pregnant. Okay. Hold on one second, counsel. I'll wait. Okay. I'll wait. Um, Dr. Mitchell, I think you said earlier that it's impossible to know for sure when Laura's pregnancy ended. Do you have a, an opinion about Based on the records that you've seen and the information that's been provided to you, do you have a theory about when? It, it actually ended in November when her pregnancy test was negative. When it failed, in other words, when it was no longer viable, there is no way of knowing exactly when that happened. Okay. Um, Dr. Mitchell, somebody online, I think, made a comment, a theory, obviously, that, that Laura may have injected herself with HCG. I think that we, thought, we talked about a trigger shot or something like that. First of all, what is an HCG trigger shot? It's used in trying to help somebody get pregnant. And um, it's by prescription. It's an injection. And I saw no records that indicated that anybody would have given her a prescription for HCG. Okay. Or would there be a reason to give her one, um, especially if she was already pregnant? Right. Um, Dr. Mitchell, Clayton, in his pretrial statement, objected to your testimony on a couple of grounds. And I know you and I talked about this. Um, I'll, I'll just read one of his objections, um, that you have relied on an admittedly tampered with data set. Do you feel that you've relied on admittedly tampered data in any way, shape, or form in forming your conclusions? Absolutely not. All I've included were the fact that they both admitted that there was some type of intimacy, that there were all the other things that I used to make my decision was based on laboratory tests. And, and the Planned Parenthood sonogram that we've spoken about, and I think you, you were sitting here and saw and heard that, that testimony, did you rely on that Planned Parenthood sonogram in any way? No. And the, the um, HCG test from any lab test now that Laura did not send to any court, the one that said 130-something thousand, did you rely on that in any way? No. Does the fact that Laura has those credibility problems and that she did some things that we all agree are dumb. Does that change your opinion on whether or not she was pregnant? No. Why not? The lab tests, like I said, are 99 plus percent, and they were repeated over and over and over. And so she was pregnant. Um, one other objection that Clayton made to your testimony, Dr. Mitchell, is that you, with zero scientific or DNA basis, made a conclusion that Clayton was the father of twins. Have you reached that opinion at all? <laughs> That's I mean, I, I don't, I don't see it in your report. I'm just wondering if, if you, you agree that you can't make any conclusions at all because we don't have DNA. Correct. You're, fa you're familiar with the RavGen test process. Yes. Can you think of any reason why a woman who is not pregnant would want to take a test like that? Objection foundation. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, if Laura was not pregnant and she took and she submitted, submitted a sample to RavGen, would RavGen be able to confirm that she wasn't pregnant? Foundation. Dr. Mitchell, you're, you're familiar with RavGen. You just said that. Yes. Did you, did you ever use them in your practice or something like that, a similar service? Yes. And as part of using a, a DNA testing service like that, does the, the service confirm that the woman is or isn't pregnant? Can they come back and say this woman's not pregnant? Objection Foundation. Sustained. 
Did you ever have that happen? Did you, when you used uh, DNA testing as a doctor, did you ever have a test come back that said that a woman was not pregnant? Injection Foundation and also Ravgen's only been around for a few years. And I retired for a few. I'm asking about the process generally, Your Honor. Overruled. He can answer the question. Free cell DNA, which Ravgen is a type, <clears throat> has been around for a number of years. I used it frequently. It not only tells you if you're pregnant, it tells if it's a boy or a girl. It'll tell you if it has genetic defects. It's incredible. It's the biggest, best new technology that we've had in the last 20, 30 years. I, I was looking at my notes when you <clears throat> answered. So a Ravgen type test or Ravgen itself can tell whether it's a boy or a girl? Yes. Can tell, well, then necessarily could tell with whether the woman's pregnant at all? Yes, obviously. Okay. Um, Dr. Mitchell, one, one final question, one series. Can you see the picture behind you there of yes. Laura's body? Um, as a physician and as a man or a doctor who's delivered lots of healthy babies and maybe some that didn't end healthy, uh, can you explain how Laura's body could be that size? And she never said that she passed any dead fetus. Overruled. He can answer if he has an opinion. The court will give it the weight it deserves, which could be a little, a lot, or none at all. That, that photo is actually one of the things that... Did you look at this photo as part of I your review? I saw photo earlier, yes. And regarding the size of Laura's belly, which clearly is not here anymore, is that does that show you anything regarding whether or not she was pregnant? It could indicate that she was pregnant. could indicate other things. The fact that Laura did, didn't claim to pass a large fetus, is that something surprising to you or is that something that could logically be explained medically the fact that this pregnancy in all likelihood was no longer viable <clears throat> early in this this pregnancy um doesn't surprise me that she didn't pass much tissue at all how, how does that happen does the body what happens is the fetus starts to grow at some point at the fetus stops growing there's no longer a heartbeat. If it's very early, they may just get a period. If it's if they miscarry, they may pass a little tissue, maybe not. And some of that tissue remains enough that it continues to produce HCG. That's why she continued to have <clears throat> the positive pregnancy tests. And that's why we call it an incomplete abortion. Once we know that there's no longer a viable pregnancy there, but the pregnancy doesn't end until that all that tissue is gone, at which time it is a completed miscarriage. Okay. Two more questions, Dr. Mitchell. Have you reviewed the expert report of Dr. Deans, who's uh, Clayton's expert? Yes. Do you disagree with anything that Dr. Deans said? Not really. The only thing that was amusing to me was the fact that they're relying on a clinical pregnancy. There's a old adage, either you're pregnant or you're not. The adage isn't you're either clinically pregnant or not. And the reason for that is because to be clinically pregnant, that means you have to have prenatal care. Laura did not have prenatal care. I took care of hundreds of women who had no prenatal care. So technically, were not clinically pregnant, walked into the hospital and I delivered a nine pound baby, even though they weren't clinically pregnant. Clinical pregnancy only means that they've gotten prenatal care that you could see on ultrasound or you could hear with an instrument. And so a clinical pregnancy is not relevant here. It's either you're pregnant or you're not. And, and your opinion is that Laura was pregnant, even if it wasn't a clinical pregnancy, she was pregnant. Correct. Thank you. No further questions. All right, Council, you're at 45 minutes and 43 seconds. Council, you have 28 minutes, 46 seconds. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, you consider yourself a scientist, correct? Yes. So you know that when collecting data, it's garbage in, garbage out. If you're not relying on good data, the opinion you're going to give is not going to be credible. Is that correct? I, that's why I only re relied on the data that I thought was totally credible. And that was the data that Mr. Gingras gave you, correct? Right? That was the data that was presented to me. Uh, I saw when you drove into the parking lot, you walked in with Laura's mom in the parking lot. Are you friendly with her, with her mother? Yeah, I just met her this morning. Okay, that's nice. Did you, um, 
uh, in, well, let's go here. Mr. Gingras asked you whether or not you relied on the ultrasound, but you're aware that the ultrasound was a fake, correct? I've been told that, and that's why I didn't rely on it. Okay. But knowing that the ultrasound was a fake, doesn't that cause you to be incredulous about the other data that Ms. Owens presented you? That's precisely why I only use the data that was laboratory proven. Well, you actually sat in here and are relying on a photocopy or a picture of a medical record that Laura gave. That was the banner uh, with the three colors of highlighter. Do you remember seeing that? You're just sitting here. That, the yeah, right I, there. I saw that. Yes. And you understand Laura has admitted to faking medical records. Yes. She faked um, uh, ultrasounds by putting other lab names on them. She faked. Uh, the uh, two versions of the uh, HCG test that you relied on, correct? You know, the, she the, the data that I relied on was stuff that was verified from the laboratory itself. That's not true. You relied on a photocopy that Laura took a picture of and provided you. It's in your file. The Sonora Quest. Um, Test on October the 16th was, I believe, derived directly from Sonora Quest. Okay, let me pause I think the Does it concern you as a scientist <coughs> that three men have accused Laura of fabricating medical doc documents? That has nothing to do with the data. Does it concern you as a It doesn't have anything to do with the data? It does, doesn't mean that you should do a deeper dive to verify the authenticity of the data? If you have proof that the the Test from Banner or from Ravgen or from um, the uh, uh, quantitative HCG were fake. I, I'm willing to take a look at them, but that's what I have. But, Doctor, we have proof. She changed the sonogram and she changed the HCG levels in one of the tests that you relied on. I didn't rely on the, H, uh, on the ultrasound and I didn't rely on the faked. 100 and whatever thousand. Okay. Uh, you know that Laura testified uh, that she, well, we can agree. You reviewed absolutely zero records from Laura's PCP, correct? I don't know who her PCP is. Well, that's a problem. Wouldn't you have wanted to talk to her PCP and see what drugs she was on? I saw what drugs she was on from um, Barrow. So you saw what drugs she was on from a neurologist that she had telemedicine. You didn't request, doctor, records from her PCP, correct? I did not. Uh, and you would agree that, um, thank you, you would agree that it would have been helpful had you reviewed her historic gynecological records, correct? Correct? The testing of, of her, whether she was pregnant or not, had nothing to do with her gynecological you records. Have no idea whether or not she had elevated HCG in her system in the years before with any of the other ladies, do you? The fact that she had a negative HCG at the end of her pregnancy tells me that she didn't have familial um, HCG uh, in her system. Okay, doctor, let's really quickly talk about other things that could have caused Laura's HCG to be elevated. As a physician and a scientist, you would agree that HCG could be elevated due to pituitary, correct? Yes. It could be uh, elevated due to cancer, correct? Yes. Ovarian cysts. Depending on. If it was cancer, you're aware that Dr. Yi and Dr. Chan both provided medical records, but both indicated that Laura had ovarian. I saw those records. I didn't. I'll move on. Uh, let's go back. It could be uh, it, elevated HCG could be caused by weight loss drug. I'm not aware of weight loss, but there are drugs that can alter HCG results. Let's talk about that a little bit more. How about anxiety medication? Yes. How about antidepressants? Yes. And you, you have no idea whether or not Laura was on any of those medications because you didn't review her historic medical records other than what was provided to you by telemed at um, Barrows, correct? I saw that she was on some of those medicines. What medicine? The anti-anxiety medicine. An anti-anxiety medicine that you just said could elevate her HCG. Last doctor. Uh, IVF drugs also cause escalated HCG, do they not? Certain types. Laura could have been on Novarel or Pregen, correct? Pregen. 
I saw no records of that, and there would be no reason why if she was pregnant that she'd be on the list. One last question, doctor. The antipsychotic clozapine causes elevated HDL, does it not? It's been reported to. Thank you, Bishop. Right, redirect. One question. Dr. Mitchell, regarding the potential of some issue other than pregnancy being the source of Laura's HCG in her blood. Are you aware that after November 14th, she well, or on November 14th, she tested negative twice? Yes. If Laura had drugs or tumors or cysts or anything else that was causing an elevated HCG level, would she have tested negative for pregnancy twice on November 14th? No. Still okay. Before you sit down, doctor, I just have a few questions. So you said that HCG requires a prescription, correct? The injecting, yes. Okay. Does Planned Parenthood have the authorization to write those prescriptions, as far as you know, in Arizona anyway? I can't imagine any reason why they would. It's a drug that's used to induce ovulation, so it's in, used in infertility patients. Okay. Planned Parenthood doesn't normally do infertility. I understand, but that wasn't my question. My question was, at, are the medical doctors there? able to write a prescription for it if they chose to, if they deemed it medical, medically necessary? Yes. Okay. Did you review either the Planned Parenthood records from Mission Viejo or Los Angeles? No. Okay. Follow up to the court's questions. Nothing. Thank you, Judge. Follow up to the court's questions. Thank you, doctor. You can step down. And counsels, before we call the next witness up, just so that I'm, I, I point this out to the parties, We've explored B9, B31, and A12 that have not been moved. So I don't know if that was just an oversight or if the parties are intending to move those. I'm sorry, can I have those numbers? Again? Sure. B9, B31, and A12 were addressed but not moved. I would move to admit A12. A12 is Dr. Mitchell's report. Okay. No objection to that. And we move to admit B9 and B31. All right. And, and I assume no objection, counsel? I just wanted to look what they were. You explored them with your client on direct. Those are his actions. Yep, no objection there. Okay, the court will receive what's been marked as B9, B31, and A12. Thank you. You can call your next witness. Your Honor, if we can get a time check. Sure. Respondent's at 34 minutes, 36 seconds. Petitioner is at 46 minutes and 6 seconds. Your Honor, I'm going to reserve the rest of my time, so I'm, I'm done. Okay. All right, counsel. Judge, uh, with some technological help, and hopefully we're not on the clock, we're going to call... Uh, Dr. Deans. Okay. All right. So you're on the clock for her testimony, but getting her uh, set up is not. Yep. Okay. Dr. Deans, are you able to hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Counsel? Uh, before we go on the clock, Dr. Deans, can you hear me? It's the voice of Greg Woodnick. <laughs> yes, I can see you too. Oh, counsel? there you are. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We're ready, Judge. Thank Hold you. Hold on one second. I want to make sure she can hear everybody. Counsel, will you do a test, please? Hi. Dr. Deans, good morning. Good morning. I can hear you. Can you see me? I can. All right. And doctor, before we get started, and I, I give this advisory whenever we have um, virtual witnesses, is if you need, I understand we've all got multiple screens going. If you need to look at a report or your notes or something different, I need you to let me know that you're going to do that. We'll give you an opportunity to do it wherever that document is located. Once your, once your recollection has been reflected, please look away from that screen and let us know that you're ready. Additionally, you should be able to see, once we put it up, any exhibits that either counsel will ask you to review. Please let me know if you can't see it, okay? I will, thank you. You're welcome. When you're ready, counsel. Hi, Dr. Deans. I'm going to go lightning fast. Uh, introduce yourself to the court, please. Hi, I'm Dr. Samantha Deans. Uh, where'd you go to medical school? Indiana University School of Medicine. Are you board certified? Uh, double board certified. What's your first board? Uh, obstetrics and gynecology. And your second board? Complex family planning. Well, you have two fellowships? Uh, just one fellowship. Thank you. Um, do you teach? I do. Medical students and, uh, and physicians? Uh, medical students and resident doctors, yeah. You teach them gynecological and early family planning? Uh, yes, complex family planning. All right. All right. Thank you, Professor Deans. Um, uh, you've uh, provided us with your CV, which is Exhibit 39. I'd move to admit. Any no objection. Judgment. You also did a report for us. It's Exhibit 41, which we'll pull up on the screen. Um, uh, did you have an opportunity to review the medical records for Laura Owens? Uh, yes, the ones I was provided with. Exhibit number 41, uh, 
Did you know that that was published online on a website? Um, just to confirm, I'm looking at my report, and um, no, I did not know that was published on a website. Did you Did you give Miss Owens permission to publish your report on a website? I did not. Okay, um, Judge, I'm tendering Dr. Deans as a uh, as an expert here. Any objections? Uh, I no, I have one vaude va dire question for her. Sure, go ahead, Dr. Deans. Hi, good morning. How many doc? Uh, how many children have you delivered? As a OBGYN, uh, probably too many to count, but I would say at least uh, three thousand at this point. Okay, I stipulate to for expertise. Right. So stipulated. All right. Um, basic question, Doctor Deans. I'm going to go fast here. Do you have concerns regarding the legitimacy of some of the records you reviewed? I do. Uh, if this court were to assume that the June first uh, HCG test actually came from Laura, would that confirm pregnancy? Um, no. What is the medical standard of care to confirm a pregnancy? Um, that would have to be either serial HCGs showing a trend over time um, or a pregnancy test and or an ultrasound um, or a physical exam that confirms an intrauterine pregnancy. And we had none of that here, correct? Correct. All right, I'm showing you exhibit number 28. Are you aware that that's the ultrasound from Laura? Are you aware that that was altered? Yes, I am. Uh, Laura claimed it was anonymous and from Plan. Planned Parenthood. Any thoughts about that? Um, patients cannot be seen anonymously at Planned Parenthood. Uh, Planned Parenthood, I have, having been a former medical director of Planned Parenthood, um, PPFA, which is our national um, guidelines, require um, identification at the time of a visit to confirm the identity of the patient. Uh, the patient can't be seen anonymously. Thank you. Laura claims she was pregnant with twins. Anything you reviewed in any of the medical records confirmed that Laura was pregnant with twins? Or a claim that the twins were boy and girl gender. Anything that you reviewed that confirms that? No. Uh, do you recall reviewing the October 16th uh, HCG test? Uh, I think it had a 100 or three-digit uh, HCG level on it. I do. Um, do you, are you aware that there's actually two other versions of that exact same test in circulation? Uh, I've heard that. I have not. Uh, if I told you there was another version with a thousand times higher HCG level, would that cause you concern? Yes, it would. Um, are there alternate causations for a positive HCG test as we have here? Yes, sir. Um, did you review the, well, I'm going to skip over the photos. Um, did you review Dr. Medchill's report? Um, I did. Um, you're aware that Laura first claimed she miscarried in September or October. And then uh, the photos that are in the report indicate that it happened in uh, the third week of July, correct? Correct. Um, pursuant to Dr. Medchill's report, he concluded, uh, well, do you agree with his conclusion uh, that the data here warrants that Laura was 99% pregnant? Uh, no, I do not agree with that assessment. Uh, do you agree with Dr. Medchill that the record confirms, this is from his report, a May 20th conception date? Uh, absolutely not. There's no data to um, confirm um, a conception date at this point that would require an ultrasound dating of a pregnancy. Uh, Professor Deans, thank you. Judge, I just moved to admit Exhibit 41 if I didn't already. Any objection? No objection. 41 is received. Cross-examination when you're ready. Dr. Deans, um, you reviewed records that showed that Laura had uh, HCG in her blood uh, October 16th, 2023. You're, you're familiar with those? Yes. Where did that HCG come from? Um, it could come from a variety of sources. Okay. And your report mentions some of those sources. Um, I, I'm just going to ask about specific things. Exogenous injection. I'm assuming that's a fancy word way of saying a, a, sticking yourself with a needle. Correct. Exogenous would be an HCG source from outside of the body. And do you have any information? Or have you seen any records that suggest that that happened here? Um, I don't. Okay. Um, heterophilic antibodies, which I did a little reading on that, some sort of allergic response, it sounds like maybe. Uh, correct. An autoimmune response um, okay. can be triggered by uh, exposure to animals um, and create positive tests. Okay. But the fact that Laura tested, po te sorry, tested negative for pregnancy November 14th would appear to be inconsistent with at least the heterophilic antibody theory. Would you agree with that? Um, I, it depends on the type of test. A urine pregnancy test might be positive, but a blood test could still be positive. It depends on the assessment and the, the level of HCG at the time of the test. Okay. And I think Dr. Medchill said, and I think you also said that cancer can cause um, elevated HCG levels. That, that's a fact, right? 
Correct. And have you seen any records to, su to suggest that Laura has cancer presently or that she did in 2023? Uh, not presently. No, I know there's a, a discussion of a prior history of ovarian cancer. I understand that. But um, regarding 2023, if Laura had cancer in 2023 that caused positive pregnancy, false positive pregnancy tests between May and um, October, when the last one was, how can you explain her testing negative in November? Um, I mean, I think it makes that less likely unless she had treatment in the meantime. And and um, another uh, option that you wrote about in your report was something called familial HCG syndrome as being a, a way that someone could test um, positive, have HCG in their blood, not from pregnancy, correct? Correct. Do you know how rare that is? Uh, very rare. I, I read that it was about 10 cases in the planet. Does that sound about right to you? Um, sure. And again, if, if Laura had familial HCG syndrome, that would explain some false positive tests in the middle of the year, but it wouldn't explain the negative at the end, would it? That is correct. Um, Dr. Deans, in your report, you talked about um, objective evidence of pregnancy. On the first page in particular, um, you said that the only objective evidence of pregnancy uh, is a banner urgent care uh, serum quantitative HCG uh, from, well, I think that's actually a misstatement, but October 16th wasn't at banner, but there was a serum HCG. And you've refer to that as objective evidence of pregnancy. Is that true? Correct. And in the absence of some other explanation, cancer, familial, uh, horse tranquilizers or whatever, in the absence of some other explanation, you would agree, and Dr. Medchill, I think, said that HCG test from October 16th is objective evidence of pregnancy, right? Um, it is objective evidence, and one of the possibilities of that objective evidence is pregnancy. Right. And if a woman is pregnant, regardless of how much or how little prenatal care she has, she's still pregnant, right? Um, uh, if they are pregnant, yes. I mean, a woman, a woman could be pregnant and have no ultrasound until the day the baby comes out, and she's still pregnant, right? Yes, and the objective data would be the baby coming out of her body. Right. And Dr. Deans, you, you worked, or your um, report and your resume indicated that you worked at Planned Parenthood for a while? That's correct. In that capacity, did you um, counsel women regarding terminating their pregnancies? Correct. Uh, and just for the record, I'm strongly pro-choice, strongly Planned Parenthood. Um, if a woman was choosing or was thinking about choosing to terminate her pregnancy, why would she have a, a, a prenatal care? Um, oftentimes, patients care first to confirm their pregnancy before they make their decision about how to end it. But in a lot of states... I'm sorry to cut you off. For another I'm out of time. Thank you very much. Thank no, you. No redirect. Thank you, Professor Deans. We appreciate your help. All right, any objections Thank you. to the professor disconnecting? No. no. All right. Thank you, Dr. Deans. If you'd like to disconnect, you may. If you'd like to stay and listen, you absolutely may. Thank you very much. Welcome. Time check, Judge. 38 minutes, 57 seconds. Um, we're going to call Clayton quickly. I'm going to be lightning fast. State your name to the court. Clayton Eckerd. Did you participate and sign the pretrial statement that we provided to Judge Mata? Yes. Uh, are those statements true and accurate? Yes. Are we asking the court in light of our very limited time today to consider our pretrial statement as part of your testimony today? Yes. How did you meet Laura? Uh, Laura targeted me on LinkedIn. Um, she asked to do real estate. We ended up um, exchanging contact info, she became, she became flirtatious, sent me a provocative photo. I told her to come over, and then we saw homes the next day. Did you have sex with Laura? Absolutely not. I've said time and time again, she performed oral on me twice. That's it. Have you heard two other versions about what happened? Absolutely. Many versions. She's claimed that she was raped by me. She also claims I was too high to uh, remember what happened that day. I'm going to repeat what you just said. She claimed you were she was raped by you and that you were too high to remember? That's correct. Were you too high to remember? That's incorrect. I remember every single thing from that night. Did you rape her? I did not. Uh, you stated that she had gave you oral sex twice that evening. Is that correct? That's correct. Where did you complete? Her mouth both times. What happened the second time? She ran straight to the bathroom. Uh, were your fluids ever down there, as Laura has claimed? No. Uh, what happened the next days? The next day, uh, we went and saw houses. I told her that I crossed a professional boundary. Um, I told her that that was a one-time thing. It would not happen again. She became very agitated at that point, was crying, and asked for me to give her a chance. But hang on for a second. She came over to your house. She gave you 
oral sex twice. The next day you told her you weren't interested in her. That's correct. I rejected her. Yes. And then four days later, what happened? Uh, four days later, um, she started making claims that she could possibly be pregnant. But hang on. Did your penis ever go inside her accidentally, inadvertently or anything no. like that? No. Uh, you're a public figure. You're the bachelor. That's why everyone's watching today. Are you embarrassed to say who you've had sex with Clayton? Um, I think I'm the last person to, to lie about who I've been intimate with. Were you, did you have penile vaginal sex whatsoever? Or else? No, absolutely not. Has that been your story since day one? My story, my story has been consistent since day one. I'm going to show you exhibit number three. Um, put that up on the screen. Thanks, Isabel. Um, did Laura start communicating with you more after she said she thought she was pregnant at four days? Yes, nonstop. She sent me over 500 emails and text messages, 13 different phone numbers. 13 phone numbers? Phone numbers. How many messages? Over 500. Exhibit three, is that a sample of those texts and emails that were shown to Judge Gail Ketzis in the injunction against harassment hearing from November 2nd, 2023? Yes. I move to admit exhibit three, and Judge, you already took notice because you watched the videos. I assume no objection. No objection. Exhibit three is received. Um, at some point, did she start calling your mom who's in the courtroom? Uh, she started reaching out to my parents. She started reaching out to my work organizations. Um, she started reaching out to people, women that I talked to in the past. She went for everybody. Was she claiming anything in particular? Um, she was claiming that I was yeah, a deadbeat that's not supporting her uh, through her pregnancy. Well, hang on. It was more than that, Clayton. It was a deadbeat who was not supporting her through her pregnancy of what? With twins. Twins? Yes. Uh, did she reach out to the Sun magazine? She did, yes. Did she ever tell you what gender the imagined twins were? Boy and a girl. Did she ever tell you, um, well, uh, drawing your attention to some motions Laura filed and for purposes of attorney's fees, she filed a motion to communicate on August 8th, a motion to compel communication on August 23rd, and August 29th, a few days later, an expedited motion to communicate. And then shortly thereafter, she filed an order of protection, correct? Yes. And you're aware that she's filed orders of protection against two other individuals seated in the back of the courtroom, correct? That's correct, yes. They are on the left? Yes. Well, my right, but yes, or left. Thank you. Greg Gillespie and? Michael Mangini. Uh, I want to look at exhibit number seven, Clayton. Uh, is that a true and accurate copy of email communication between you and Laura from July 1st, 2023? Absolutely, yes. You received it? Yes. And she sent it? You yes. heard her testify with uh, Ms. Serena from my office, or excuse me, with uh, Mr. Gingras, denying that emails exchanged were from her. She seems to be blaming, I guess, Greg Gillespie for faking her email. You remember her testimony? Yes, yeah, she said that, but nothing she says is true. Uh, she's actually sent you emails with videos attached to them, and you've had, uh, and you've responded back to them, correct? That's correct, yes. All right, specifically exhibit number seven. Uh, I, I think you stated that it was a true and accurate copy. I think the caption, I'm going to try to read it on the caption. Uh, the top. I think it says, the final opportunity to consider abortion. You remember getting this from Laura? Yes. Um, move to admit exhibit seven. Objection. Yeah, no objection, Your Honor. Seven's received. Uh, it, further down in that email, Clayton, and this will get awkward, uh, but further down in that email on July from July 1st, which was weeks after the uh, alleged encounter, uh, Laura references her tight vagina. Why is that both uncomfortable and relevant to court today? Uh, because she's stating that if I would have felt how tight her vagina was, I might change my mind, which is her stating that I never penetrated her. We never had penetrative sex. Wait, the exhibit that the court just received has Laura saying that her vagina was tight as if you hadn't been in there before? That is correct. Well, had you been in there before? I had not, no. All right. Uh, she also sent you communications in exhibit number seven talking about uh, wanting to have sex with you during a week trial week. What was that about? Yeah. She said that she would be the safest person to have sex with her since she was already pregnant. But hang on for a second. She told you she wanted to have sex with you because she was already pregnant? That's correct. Uh, how did you feel when you read that email, Clayton? I'm mean, sick. My stomach, all of this has made me sick. Did you feel like she was trying to trap you? Absolutely. Uh, you heard the testimony with uh, uh, Dr. Medchill concerned that Laura was on IVF medication trying to get pregnant. Is that consistent with those concerns? Uh, yeah, I believe that she was taking medications. I'm going to show you exhibit number six. And I, let me restate that question. You heard my question to Dr. Medchill about IVF medication, which are used to cause pregnancy, and, and you share concerns that she was using those to trap you. Is that Absolutely, correct? Absolutely, yes. All right. Exhibit number six, Isabel. Uh, exhibit number six is another email dated June 28, 2023. Is that a true and accurate copy of the correspondence between you and Laura? It's 
this. You remember reading this? I remember reading this. You yes. remember reading it on June 28th ish when you received it? I do, yes. Uh, and the title of this, can you read the title of this out loud for the court? Having the baby if I don't hear back tonight. Having the baby if I don't hear back tonight. Um, move to admit exhibit six. Any objection? No objection. Uh, this is received. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to show you exhibit 11. Did Laura send you ultrasounds during this time period? Yes, she did. Uh, is exhibit 11 uh, an image of an ultrasound you received from Laura? Yes. Uh, she's going to claim that she didn't send this to you, but how do you know this came from Laura? Because I was interacting with her from that same email address. I also took a screen record showing that it was from her email address, and that's where all my other communications have come from her. Um, uh, real quick, so uh, on exhibit number 11, this one says, the caption on it says, ultrasound video proof, correct? That's correct. And the signature block on there in the picture is the exact same signature block and picture from the other email, which is also not favorable to Laura, which she claims is not hers, correct? No, that's Move right. to admit exhibit 11. Any objection? No objection. Uh, on exhibit 11, uh, well, do you know where the video came from on exhibit number 11? Uh, yeah, from a YouTube video from seven years ago. YouTube video from seven years ago? Correct. Uh, on that, this is the one that says smile, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. This one says GE. Um, no, this one's a different one, yes. Okay. Because how many are there? How many ultrasounds have you seen? Three. Okay. Um, this one, I think, on the on the caption says, and here's my 100 million percent real ultrasound. Yeah, a lot of you remember? I don't know if my math is right on that. Do you remember rece receiving that? Yes, I received it before, yes. Uh, court already admitted it. I'm going to show you uh, exhibit number 28. Uh, you recall receiving this ultrasound? Yes, I saw this from Bonnie Platter. Okay, okay. I'm going to be real clear about this. Uh, Ms. Owens just testified that she did not use this ultrasound in a court procedure, but it was actually admitted as an exhibit by Laura through her counsel at the February 2nd, 2024 deposition of you, correct? Correct. All right, that video deposition of you, have you seen that recently? Yes, I have. Where did you see the video deposition of yourself? Uh, it was posted on YouTube by either uh, her counsel or herself. Wait, Laura or her counsel posted your video deposition on YouTube? That's correct. How many paternity tests did you take, Clayton? Three. Uh, I'm gonna show you exhibit number 36. Um, you know what, I'm gonna skip past that. That was the... Um, Dr. Medkill's, uh, let's get past that. Well, you know what, real quickly, how many versions of the um, uh, of the HCG test have you seen? Uh, two, I believe, yeah, the 102 and 100. One with more digits yes. on it? Yes. All right, um, I'm going to show you exhibit number 46. Uh, would you agree that exhibit number 46 for attorney's fees is a blog from Mr. Gingras where he acknowledges his client fake uh, uh, some of the uh, science stuff. Yes, that's correct. Um, I'm going to show you, to move this along, uh, exhibit number 55. Uh, exhibit number 55 was right before your March 1st deposition. Or right before, excuse me, Laura's March 1st deposition. Actually, did she show up at her earlier deposition? No, she didn't. And the court ordered her compelled to attend, and we're still waiting for the court to order on attorneys. That. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, uh, but at her, uh, right before, what happened a day or two related to Exhibit 55, a day or two before your deposition? Uh, she threatened to extort me for to the tune of $1.4 million uh, in order for me to drop the deposition uh, and the case entirely. Wait a minute. She sent you a letter a day before trying to get out of the deposition? Yes, she threatened me. Threatened you with what? Monetary. Monetary means. Is so everything that we've talked about today so far, other than the YouTube videos, which are more recent, is everything addressed in prior pleadings already before Judge Mata? Yes. Um, really quickly, for attorney's fees purposes, exhibit number, well, let me get in a few exhibits real quick. Exhibit 29, 37, and 59, these are the medical records from uh, pursuant to subpoena from doctors uh, for Planned Parenthood, Dr. McCool, and Dr. Higgins. We've moved to admit they've all been... I'm sorry, you said 37? Correct that, sorry. 29, 37, and 59. Any objections? Not to those. Did we talk about Exhibit 54 yet? Hold on one second. 29, 37, and what was the other one? 59. 59 are received. We'll talk about that one after counsel. And then I'll go back. It was Exhibit number 55, which is the letter that Laura sent you, uh, suing you to sue you for $1.4 million before the um, deposition. Move to admit. I, I, now, that one I'll object to. That's a Rule 408 settlement offer, Your Honor. He's offering to prove that the claim's not valid. That's absolutely inappropriate. Judge, over, just, over objection, the court's going to receive it for the purposes of attorney's fees only. Counsel, you have run out of time. I'm out of time? You're out of here. Okay. So you can go sit back down.
Okay, so council, what exhibit were you asking me about? You, you yeah, you said has something uh, that moved. Fifty four. That's we just, that, we just cured. Okay. okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so at this time, what the court's going to do is I'll take this under advisement. What that means is I'm going to go back. I'm going to review the notes that I took today. I'm going to review the evidence that was admitted to the court, and then everyone will receive my order. Your Honor, of one housekeeping matter, I'm leaving the country tonight. I'm not back until June twenty eighth. Um, if the court issues something that requires a quick response, I'm going to be on a boat and I may not have the ability to respond. So I would just ask either that you grant me some extension if I need it. Uh, I'm, I return back to the country June 28th. So just advising you. Okay. And and I'm sorry, counsel, when do you leave? Tonight. Okay. All right. So June 10th to the 28th, you right. will be unavailable. Okay. Uh, I should have email part of the time, but not all of it. You can't really be held accountable for that. I understand. <laughs> Any other thing, anything else administrative? Uh, no, thank you, Judge. All right, so how this will work now at this point is I have relinquished all security to court security and any underlying law enforcement that are present. They will be escorting people out in the manner that they deem to be appropriate. If there's competing orders against harassment or orders of protection, then we can take those things into consideration. And I just ask that um, if the people in the gallery are able, any conversation come out into the hall. That would be great for our other people who are here for other matters. Thanks. All right. Okay, well.